Welcome and thank you all for being here. My name is Noralis Fries and I am the Publications Coordinator at Centro. I'm also a ethnomusicology student, so this topic, Rise the Wall by Brenna, is very dear to my heart. I have studied the ways in which musical expressions reflect the values and changes of a culture at large. And this is never more apparent than with Bomba Plena music. I'm pleased to introduce you to our two presenters tonight. Professor Antonio Nadal is the Deputy Director of the Department of Puerto Rican and Latino Studies at Brooklyn College. His areas of expertise include bilingualism, Latin American and Caribbean literature, and Puerto Rican music and folklore. Jorge Arce is an actor, dancer, singer, and performer who will present tonight on the history of Bomba y Plena, as well as lead us in an interactive demonstration of some elements of the music. Again, thank you all for being here, and please join me in welcoming Jorge Arce and Professor Tony Good evening, everyone. I am so happy to be here at the Centro. Uh, perhaps I should tell you that um, <clears throat> I am now in the 44th year of my career at the university level, and that uh, I'm retiring next year, uh, but I'm not dying. You know, I'll still be around, uh, and it gives me great pleasure to be able to be here tonight because going back to 1972 when a center for Puerto Rican studies was being discussed uh, with people who were very much interested in having some kind of a central place where not only uh, our community could come and do research, but also to connect with the budding and developing Puerto Rican studies programs of the time uh, developing, that it would have a central focus, both, and, and from the very beginning, it was uh, very clear that the center would have outreach to community because the programs are created by student activity. Actually, they came, they were bottom up, not top down. So the idea of creating a, um, a think tank, a research area that would have that dual focus of uh, doing research while at the same time still maintaining a close ties to community because this uh, was uh, uh, an absolute uh, necessity at the time. Of course, I belonged be, belong to a generation that was involved in a lot of what we call revolutionary activities. It was during the time of the uh, Vietnam War. There was a civil rights movement. Uh, there was an ethnic revival in the United States. And then, as now, Puerto Ricans were looking to find an identity within all that. Uh, and quite often, we look toward African American communities who were doing very much the same thing, developing slogans that were uh, disturbing to some people. You know, when they started talking about black is beautiful, right? Uh, some people got really upset because uh, we had to clarify that when we say black is beautiful or even brown power, that it didn't mean that white was ugly. Uh, so that had to be clarified because, I mean, uh, uh, much was going on in the activities of the uh, 1960s, early 70s with the creation of the Puerto Rican studies programs, which are now expanded to Latino studies, Latin American, etc. Uh, I am still working in a department that calls itself the Puerto Rican and Latino studies program, because the Puerto Rican population, I'd like to say, was, you might say, the fulcrum of the whole movement of Latinoism in New York. Uh, and we, we have to bear that in mind that uh, the Puerto Rican studies presence Puerto Ricans in general, in terms of identity, that waged a struggle that had an influence not only here among our community in the diaspora, which as you know now numbers almost a million more than Puerto Ricans on the island, but that we became an inspiration for people on the island itself. Um, the topic of tonight, uh, one which is very dear to me, as was mentioned before, because I, I've been teaching this course since 1975, continuously, every semester, sometimes more than one section. And it's a course on Puerto Rican music and folklore that began, and I have to make this point because it's, it's highly important in terms of what we mean by formation, identity formation. Uh, the course began by highlighting the European aspects of Puerto Rican music. 
uh, I'm a great friend of, and I'm also a member of the board of an organization called Musica de Camara, some of you may have heard of. I've been on that board now for 28 years. And uh, one woman in particular, who is now in her 80s, uh, she is a soprano, a graduate of um, Juilliard, uh, a tremendous, tremendous person who has developed the art, the artistic expression in classical music among Puerto Ricans. But she's also a salsera, she's also a bombera, she's a prenera. Her name is Eva de la Oa, maybe some of you may have. And she's been awarded, the community has recognized her. In fact, at Brooklyn College, we, every year we have an activity called the Encuentro, which is taking place uh, next week, actually, on the 13th. Uh, today we have a piano recital, which features Latin American music from all over, including Puerto Rico, of course. I couldn't be there because I had made a commitment to be here and to, uh, to discuss and to present uh, Jorge Arce, who is really the main show tonight. The interesting aspect of uh, discussion tonight on these two modalities, these African, they are really African modalities that we call bomba and plena, uh, are at the heart of the question of identity because as Puerto Ricans in, in the diaspora growing up, um, I was com as conflicted as any young person because I was not a white Creole Puerto Rican. Right? My family is rather mixed, you know, we were the rainbow people, as Felipe Luciano once called us, and we had to find ourselves in the, in the, within that amalgam of American society, and then a struggle for civil rights, and a struggle uh, uh, to stop the Vietnam War, where our people were much more disproportionately represented, it created a consciousness. Well, at the same time, because we were looking at the example of what black people were doing in this country, we found our own black roots. Uh, and that's very important, because I didn't even find that in Puerto Rico. And in fact, even among my family, it was always the whole thing that if you had black roots, what you had to do was amalgamate with white people because I didn't talk, so I la raza, which I'm sure you've all heard. Right? Uh, so it was a real struggle because, you know, I mean, uh, um, uh, my hair at the time was a lot more curly and everything. Now, as I get older, it's gotten, you know, that happens with age. But I tried to bring forward my, my Afro and identify as a Puerto Rican African, right? And that really disturbed my family tremendously. But it was great because my, my friends began to relate on that level. And going back to Puerto Rico and talking to family, that newly found consciousness, which I found as a college student, actually, because uh, I am a, not only a, a, a Brooklyn College almost forever, but I was also a student there. And it was a, essentially a, a, what you would call a white institution, right? There was nothing, no diversity at all on, that, on those campuses. Uh, so the, the students that were there began to push forward the agenda that Puerto Ricans had to have something in the Brooklyn College curriculum. It started with a simple demand, at least one course, the historia or cultura, right? Musica. And I remember that Eva de Lao um, was the first to develop the course that I teach. Of course, being that she's a classical musician, a soprano, she gave it a much more European tilt. Um, and uh, when Eva left, uh, that was in the middle 70s, I inherited the course. And uh, having been through this transformation, that was, that was personal but also academic, um, I began to infuse the course with the African modalities of our music. And I'll have to tell you that it's the most popular course in our curriculum. It always closes every semester, right? Uh, because our young people can relate to music. They can relate to something that tells them something. And of course we know, and we'll hear it much more from Jorge, who's a much better expert than I am in this area, that identity with the music, that identity with movement, that identity uh, with what it means to bring to the forefront the African heritage in our culture is hugely important for our young people. So uh, as I began to develop the course and I began to do more research on uh, the two forms that we're talking about today, one by Glenna, which are distinctive, pretty distinctive by the way, um, I had to also point out that in the audience um, uh, my mentor at the time, because I worked in a bilingual program at Kingsborough Community College as a counselor, as an instructor, I was teaching literature. My, my, my main gig was to teach literature and language. 
but I was also a musician on the side. Uh, and he's here today, actually. Uh, I want to introduce him. Uh, he's a professor emeritus from CUNY, Benjamin Pacheco. And uh, Benjamin is a sociologist, he's an anthropologist, he's a writer, he's a, he, he paints, he's a Renaissance man. Um, and he knew a lot about this stuff. He knew a lot about folklore. So um, that's hugely important as well, because I think I followed his steps in being a mentor to many of our young students today, who really do need that kind of grounding to find out that, you know, Puerto Ricans have something to offer. You know? um, so anyway, the, uh, uh, Edwin Melendez uh, asked me to come and be the discussant tonight for this area. Actually, what I'm really doing is presenting Jorge, and then later on we'll, we'll have an interaction with the audience uh, in a question and answer type format, uh, and we can, actually, that's more interesting than hearing the lecture, because don't give a professor, como le dicen, dicen, le da una oferta para que hable, hay que darle 10 para que se calle. So I'm not going to, uh, to, to, <laughs> to hold you any longer. I, wanted to, I want to present Jorge, and uh, he's going to do quite a few things, uh, and what he says is more a theatrical presentation, and then, of course, It'll, it'll be more later on more like a hold down, if you know what I mean. Uh, so I want to say some, a few things about him that, uh, of course, I know about his work. I actually have not met him, but I knew about his work because in this field, you know, in this area, you know, people get to know who's who. Um, and he really wasn't in New York. His whole thing is there out there in Boston, right? I know people who are doing this kind of thing in Chicago and in Philadelphia and in Newark. Um, so I like to think it's something that I discussed with Jorge that uh, Puerto Rican music, in all of its manifestations, right? sometimes we talk about bomba plena and then we talk about salsa. Uh, and salsa, I tell my students, Peter Puente once defined salsa as something he put in his food. He didn't like that word. It's a commercial term to sell records and to not to have to explain what I found out as a musician myself, that it's a highly complex, highly complex and, and diversified type of music. Yes, it has Cuban roots, Afro-Cuban roots, right? There are many aspects of it that have taken from the development of popular, uh, popular and jazz music in the United States. Um, it's not always easy to dance to because I've always had students to say, well, I like Menengue because Menengue is easier to dance because even if you have a broken leg, you can drag it. And, and then I said, well, Menengue is not that easy either. <laughs> so when we get into these things in the course, it's it really what fascinates students, that the complexity of it, the fact that it has a rich history, and that they can relate to the fact that this is something that they're learning really for the first time as college students, mind you, because um, the high schools are not really doing a great job either in that, in that, in that regard, but that the students can relate. And at the, while, while they relate, what I also found, and this is what's important about the kind of work that, that Jorge does and people like him, is that people, the students not only find their identity, but they also find a discipline in themselves. They become better students. They're not alienated because they're in a culture which doesn't recognize, we were talking about that earlier, a, a culture that doesn't recognize their individuality. We now call it diversity, right, or multiculturalism. Um, so that these students begin to identify, they then develop a, what I would call a real hunger to know about themselves, and that connects to knowing about anthropology and history and, you know, and doing well in school and being responsible. Um, I like to quote a uh, famous folklorist who passed away about a year and a half ago at the nice ripe old age of 92. His name is Pete Seeger. Uh, I was influenced a great deal by the uh, folk rock movement in the United States in the 1960s. I used to sing doo-wop. Later on, I graduated to what they called salsa, and I, uh, I took up the piano, and I took up percussion. Uh, and Pete Seeger said, if you want to move people better than giving speeches and better than defending a cause and getting them all riled up, he says, sing to them. Sing to them. Bring music into their lives. Because you have to beware of a movement that sings. So uh, that stuck to me, because I realized the power of artistic expression, whether it's through singing, through music, through dance. And of course, the topic tonight is bomba and plena. And both of them are forms of music that they're irresistible. I don't know if you're walking through uh, 
to Central Park in the, in the summer afternoon, and you hear a bunch of drums, and you hear some coro de soneo going on, right? And you just, it's almost like <laughs> you're drawn magically to it, right? Uh, so that's, of course, the initial appeal, that the, that the music itself is highly entertaining, right? And that it's interactive, that it brings people in. But tonight, aside from that, the idea is also to get some perspective on the, the scholarship and the work that has been done to clarify uh, much that is not known about uh, this phenomenon. So, let me just say a little bit about Jorge, right? Uh, for those of you who do not know him, um, there's an awful lot of him on the internet <laughs> because of his work. He was born in Belgica, a working class neighborhood of Ponce, Puerto Rico. Uh, Ponce, which is the largest township in Puerto Rico. Ponce is a city well known for its rich cultural traditions and it's characterized by the emergence and evolution of important Afro-Caribbean music and dances such as the bomba plena, but also danza, which is considered a semi-classical form. So it's very interesting. There you see the, the convergence of the uh, of, 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 of race and ethnicity. Um, Jorge's family is partially from, <clears throat> from Belgica, but he has another uh, half of his family that is from El Valle de San Antón, right? I don't know if you remember, because it's a tagline from a famous uh, plena, that's very old, that goes something like this. La plena que yo conozco no es de la china ni del Japón, porque la plena que yo conozco viene del barrio de San Antón. And he can relate to that, because he's from there as well. <laughs> um, thank you. <laughs> My voice is not up to the car today. Maybe you'll hear me sing a little bit more later. Um, half of Jorge's family comes from San Anton, mainly a black community known for the African tradition of the bom bomba music. The other half comes from the music tradition. His life in the barrio of Belgica was filled with plena music. This experience, among other things, has contributed to his creativity and curiosity. In addition to being an actor, dancer, singer, and performer, he is also a cultural historian and researcher. He holds degrees, uh, a bachelor's degree, and a master's degree from Harvard University in education. Uh, and he has studied the theater arts. Jorge's uh, uh, his early exposure to the bomba and plena in Puerto Rico helped him to establish a direct relationship with the Cepeda family. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but in Puerto Rico, usually um, folkloric and popular or even classical music is identified with particular families. If you say, you know, famous classical violinist and pianist, Lo Figueroa. But if you talk about <laughs> Bomba Plena, the African side, then you talk about the Sepenas and the Ayalas, right? So um, uh, Jorge became, uh, established a, re a relationship with the Sepena family in the early 1970s. You know, he looks very young, but he's uh, probably older than I am. <laughs> He was able to include them in television, record, and theater productions. In 1979, he wrote, performed, directed, and choreographed the musical theater piece Melodia en el Caño, in which the leader and choreographer of the Cepeda's family ensemble, Petra Cepeda, played a leading role. This piece, broadcast as a TV special, was later recorded in the album Tierra, Tierra. By Haciendo Punto en Otro Son, is a group that uh, really uh, heavily inspired us because they were part of the uh, uh, very lyrical but also protest movement of uh, Puerto Rican music going back to the 1970s. And Haciendo Punto en Otro Son. I really didn't know that Jorge was one of the people that you might say was founders of it. Um, but uh, they're still around from what I understand, right Jorge? Yes. Haciendo Punto, yeah. Okay, um, a renowned group of which Jorge Arce has been a member since 1978. It has been used as reference material in schools in Puerto Rico, as well as in public school systems in the U.S. connected to the Puerto Rican community. Two more recording projects in which Arce was involved were Del Caribe al Brasil, notice the connection here, in the Caribbean, and, and a huge country called Brazil where the African modalities are huge. Um, and Moridi um, both included Don Rafael's compositions, and in all of them, the participation of members of the Cepeda family uh, was very important. Arce toured the United States from 1975 to 1982 as an actor and a musician, 
Since 1983, it has been Arce's responsibility to expand the Bomba and Plena through workshops, classes, residencies, and performances at school sites, festivals, parent and community organizations and universities, thus becoming one of the most important cultural liaisons to the Puerto Rican community in the United States. And this is highly important, this connection that we develop now between the diaspora and Puerto Rico, because it's, it's really us creating consciousness of who we are here to our, our brethren back on the island. After completing his uh, educational program at the Boston Conservatory in 1985, where he majored in musical theater, he decided to share his experiences with youth and children and to learn more from the community of people who best knew the traditions of his native culture. Arce conceived Humano, that's the name of this, uh, the group that he leads, uh, uh, conceived Humano in 1987 as a result of an invitation to perform at the Ruiz Belvis Cultural Center in Chicago. About the same time, he became the coordinator of a successful cultural program in the Human Service Agency and gained valuable experience leading cultural projects in schools and the community. He then rejoined the community as an artist, and by combining the elements of tradition with community and cultural awareness, Humano was born. And this is why I think it's, it's highly important that the Puerto Rican Studies Research Center, El Centro, is carrying that tradition and that they are uh, <coughs> developing a whole program which is both academic but also popular, bringing popular education to the masses. So Jorge has been doing this for many years. Jorge received his Master of Education degree from Harvard University in 19, 1994. He's listed in, the, uh, in Who's Who, 1984 and 1985. He has received numerous awards, including the Cardinal Cushing Center Award for Outstanding Services to the Community in 1987, the Alianza Hispana Recognition for Outstanding Contributions to the Continuing Growth and Success of the Hispanic Community in 1991, the Mayor's Recognition of Outstanding Contributions to the City of Boston 1991, and the Massachusetts House of Representatives Recognition for Outstanding Contribution to the Arts in 1991. His musical group, Humano, was awarded the Boston Music Award for Outstanding Latin Act, 1990. So ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, let me present to you for the answer. Uh, for me to be here with you as a family, that's why I want to bring you really together. Thanks to Jose from Bomba Yo for being in the drums. Please give a hand to him. And to all the staff of, of the Centro Puerto uh, Menendez who made the effort of bringing me here uh, to share with you. I, I didn't bring as an expert, I didn't bring as a person who knows everything, but you are the one who knows. Actually, this presentation has a root uh, from an invitation in 1976 in France when I was uh, there performing with Puerto Rico. But I don't know if you remember this play, Puerto Rico Foie, that yeah. was really for many years. I was part of that first cast for seven years, I think, or 10 years or so. So we went to France, and in France, uh, Jose Moleon from Spain invited me to do a performance between Venezuela, Mexico, and selected me from Puerto Rico. But my mission was to, sh uh, to uh, discover the African roots to be part of that play. It didn't happen, but the research it happened. That's how I met the Sertana family. That's how I got with uh, Isabel Ocenon, uh, that is, who is very important to know this of, of our language, of our culture, and uh, the uh, and all the people who wrote uh, several uh, 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 material that are very important, that are foundation. So this is a presentation it's not merely about bomb by pena, but bomb by pena within the context of the Caribbean. Okay, so you find we find the connections, and you find how many things happens, and it comes from Africa. Okay, but one thing that I want to clarify: you are the audience right now. Okay, or you're gonna be the performers. I'm gonna just be sitting around there watching you. Okay, that's very important. So get ready for it. Okay, <laughs> now. I want to start with something, establishing something. See, this is a center for Puerto Rican studies. And seriously, like a Don uh, uh, Antonio Nadal, uh, I'm sorry about the Don, you know about the <laughs> okay. uh, And, and uh, many professors that are here presented. There is a lot of research here. This is a social uh, work uh, school 
So I, I just brought an excerpt, an excerpt uh, to establish the foundation of a writing that I developed in Puerto Rico when I was doing my doctoral studies. And actually, this is in a class with uh, 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 Dr. Uh, Lopez, a very important Cuban anthropologist who really inspired me. So, and it says, uh, I'm not going to read all this, I get just two pages, okay, and double space. But this is the foundation. It's uh, African and Caribbean common language. Aside from the historical research that examines the slave trade from the 16th century to date, there is uh, overwhelming evidence that African and his descendants were treated as objects of exploitation and not as bearers or carriers of culture. Yet, even when we understand the importance of them as subjects of this valuable contribution, we continue to distort their image by extra extrapolating those expressions invented or created by European slaves. In the past, traders of human beings used the expressions such as black or negro, as well as carabali, lukumi, mandingo, tagua, or kanga, nicknames, to simplify the slave trade. This denied the history of the true identities of African culture uh, groups such as Igbo, Yoruba, Susu, Nupe, and Malinke, Wangara, among others. So we, when we talk about what we play, we have to talk about reality, about that convention. In the present time, we still use expressions derived from the lexicon of the conquerors, such as denigrating, which derived from the nigger or negro, instead of the term degrade or downgrade, which, is, which by definition would be more correct. And worse, we use them especially when we qualify the minimum degree or an, of an attitude or a physical shape, either in the parameter of the discussion or description of an event, as well as in the social, academic, legal, or political ground, and especially through the mass media, books, newspapers, radio, and television. Within the field of anthropology, ethnography, and history, expressions such as black people or negro slave trade, in other words, trata negrera, instead of a slave trade of human beings or just Africans, are still exercised. And this is a shame. Okay? It is clear that we still actively are using the language created by the conquerors. With it, the European traders split the identity of Africans brought forcibly, constantly reminding them, and this is a quote in the book of the Africans, written by an African, Ali Masrui, a quote from the 16th century, reminding them, forget that you are African, remember that you are black, forget that you are African, remember that you are black. That's important, 16th century. Okay? To this end, the difference is obvious when we refer to the Greek, Italian, or Asian people, uh, with generals uh, uh, that denote source of origin compared to when we refer to black or negro or negro, which is more related to a physical characteristic, not a country or ge geography ancestry. This persistent response to the attitudes of Europeans that used the uh, colonizing uh, black and white expression in order to divide and conquer, especially in the North African area. Thus, they affected an originally multiracial and culturally diverse world from North Africa to Southern Europe, for which there was not a difference. In the same book, there's a quote. Nothing more forcefully reminded the inhabitants of sub-Saharas who were black, they, such as the attitude of Europeans towards the skin color. Julius uh, Nyenere, of Tanzania explains how Africans across the continent knew they were one in relation to the Europeans. So that means something to you? I feel confident that as contemporary and, uh, and future researchers and historians, we can liberate ourselves uh, from the racist language of the conquered. This language does not leave room in our society for African, uh, for African descendants who have been boxed for so many centuries as subjects of exploitation and not exposed as subjects of equal participation with a broader and shared language. It's, it is this Eurocentric and racist language that misplaced and obscures the best contributions of our ancestors promoting at the same time their invisibility. 
even though we can express comfortably that we all carry this beautiful legacy in our blood like the bomb and plena, while still using that language we hide from our skin, the two mulatahe in the unity and Africanness. Okay, with this we'll start. Now, I want to bring the light down because there is a map here that is going to strike to you and it strike to me in 1967. I, it was, uh, was created. And I discovered this in the 80s, at the end of the 80s, and, and, and uh, at the beginning of the 90s. This map was designed by Arnold Peters. Okay, if you can help me here, please bring the light down, then we can bring that up. Okay, and uh, it shows uh, the real dimensions of our world. And what Arnold Peters is telling us is that if you take the world and you open it like that, okay, it's going to do a lot different. Uh, check this out here, how Africa is a lot larger in the other version of map of General Mercator's. Uh, General Mercator is a German cartographer in the 16th century. Arnold Peter is a German cartographer from uh, more contemporary right now. And this scientific just said the other map is wrong. See how Europe can fit, fit more, including that, uh, uh, than five times in African countries. Okay, African continent is a lot larger. Everything to the south is a lot larger. Look at South America. Okay, so it's telling us, it's bringing us a message that is very important here. Now, talking about the shapes and, and the shape of the continent of Africa, then enlighten us, because then I got information from Ali Matui that the real boundaries of Africa goes down to India. And for the moment, that's very important. Because in Perdas Perdas Studio, a while ago when I, 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 I returned to Puerto Rico to direct the, 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 the music program of the Institute of Culture in 2001, and then after I finished my work there, I came back into the diaspora of my people. So I was in Perdas Perdas Studio, and she brought this woman, Puerto Rican uh, woman, who uh, also, her mother is from India, so we're talking about Hindu Puerto Rican woman, dancer. And that was the first time I was confronted with the kata from India. And the kata from India is a dance that has the same feature, that the same attack of the bomba in front of the drum. And come from India, okay? I remember years ago, many years ago, when I used to produce uh, in Latea, in San Juan, uh, this production with Sunshine, and you know all these people, okay, before I enter at Cielo Punto Antosun, I was given a bongo, which we, uh, identified with the West African Bongo and Chemiya as the religious version from Morocco, okay, from North Africa. And that's another infor piece of information that gave me something else that was happening. That's why I cannot talk only about Bongo and Plena, but within the context, but we can see the picture more broader. Now, there is something very important that tells us more about this map here that really brought, uh, come to, to my mind. Uh, so, who discovered America? So, we still celebrate who? <laughs> right. Please don't laugh. <laughs> okay, so, but we know that the Native American discovered America. It's important when we talk about Bomba to, to talk about them. Because first, the Taino, say Taino. Taino. Let's celebrate that. And let me clarify something to you. Taino is not their real name. I found out that that's the way, the way they used to welcome people. Okay, so I can imagine when they, Columbus came out this because they were welcome with it. Taino, Taino, that means bueno, bueno, good, good. And the Europeans said, oh, that's, they're telling us their name. That happened in Africa. Right? When we talk in the question that we talk a little about the bomba, you know, you're going to see. Now, one thing that we know now, that we can find finally, they, American, they discovered America, Taino, they discovered the Caribbean, the Arawaks or the Taino, the water is coming from South America. All this group that met there, that's very important. And, and, and then after them, by the fourth century, I believe it was, African people came also to America. Okay, that's important. Check the, the book before Columbus, Ivan Van Sertima. And that tells me something. When you check these pictures, when you check uh, uh, this covered uh, material, you find that they established with themselves in the Olmecas. But they, did they come in those little ships like in the Titan movies? No. <laughs> they came in big vessels. No, this is Abubakar the second. 
And when you talk to a, a, a Mali uh, uh, inhabitant, they know who Abu Bakr II is. And they know that you know, they have all this uh, scientific uh, navigation uh, uh, knowledge that they share later on with uh, the Europeans. So they came to, uh, to America. Among the Olmecas, okay, uh, civilization, you can find these big faces with African fishes. That's very important for me as a musician to know. And then we know that uh, Christopher Columbus came in this part. We're talking about Erickson, but you know, we don't want to concentrate in this area here. But he brought with them, and they brought with them, okay, the conquerors, uh, this 90% of Arabs that populated the world in the first 50 years. Okay, so Lopez Valdez assuring that to us. He had the future, you can find it there, okay? And that's important because they mix with the names. 90% of the people who came, that's important. When we talk then in a conference in Puerto Rico about the plena, we have this uh, uh, Lester Nurse, a great friend and professor in, of university in Puerto Rico, who found in Morocco panderos like we have. Okay? That's very interesting. Okay? And they use it polytechnically in the same way we use it. And I have a film that was a, 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 a production that was uh, in, done in Spain production, but was filmed in Morocco. There is a scene in which these people beat the panderos in the same way we do, but differently. Okay? So that's another piece of information. So it's very important that these Arabs, who in 1514 and 1511, okay, and you can find the book Esclavos uh, Rebeldes, uh, Guillermo Baral, okay, a great friend and a great researcher, who found that in those two years, and also Fernando uh, uh, Ortiz, history of Puerto Rico, found the same information, Arabs and natives fought together against slavery. There is in this book that I found in, uh, in Mashpee, in the Wampanoa Pow Wow, okay, you know about the Wampano natives. And the black Indians, in which you see this and great, this illustration, French illustration, in which Africans and natives are dancing together. So they're sharing also. And then you see continuously, you find out more information about this interaction. But first, and I can imagine as an actor, I can imagine as an actor, how the Europeans, and, and you can see uh, uh, Ricardo Alegria talks about that. They didn't like the fact that this Latino, can you say Latino? Latino. Arab who could speak Spanish and Arab, okay, and who could uh, also learn how to communicate with the native. Uh, they didn't like that. But I can imagine these people changing their strategy, okay, and with the Dutch people, they started bringing people from West Africa, okay. And as you know, they took one family, okay, one family, because the mother is important in the tribe. Okay, and probably a wise talking, okay? They divide, so they wouldn't communicate like the other people, like the whole of us, okay? And they spread them out, little by little, starting in the Caribbean, which is the, the uh, umbilical cordon of what we have in America, okay? That's very important because they brought people from Congo, say Congo! Congo! From Senegal! Senegal! From Mali! Mali! From Mozambique! Mozambique! From Angola! Angola! From Namibia! From Ghana, yeah. from Senegal, from now all these parts, they spread them out. And now in 2014, we have the... What is that? Ah. In Puerto Rico, we have a step that I learned as a child, and you have land, you do, that is called Pera, right? Pumpa, ping, ping, pumpa, ping, ping, pumpa, right? Okay, one day I was in a disco club. And I was asking something like, everybody know how to do the conga, bum, put the put the the Oh my God. I said that. Oh, well, that's nice. Remember that song? And I stopped myself. And this is like a book, like you open, and you find that conga, you say conga? Conga. Come from Congo, right? The name of the country. And these instruments are called conga, right? Yes. Yes. And then you find that in Cuba, our sister uh, land, they do a dance that we have been doing since I was, we were, you were child, that go boom 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 that is called conga, right? <laughs> then I, I myself stopped again in the same song, and I opened it, okay, 
han estado a la rueda de la Unión Social de Bélgica, con Mozambique, que yo soy Mozambique, Punta Caprín, Punta Caprín, Punta Caprín, Punta Caprín, Punta Caprín, everybody knows how to do that, because so the song is how the Mozambique recommend to it. When I look at the map, Mozambique is a land from where people were brought to the Caribbean, to Puerto Rico, from Mozambique, a lot of them, from Puerto Rico. Okay? So that's important. Then, Back again to the song. People will think I was crazy, right? And I open it again, and then I found the rock rhythm. Okay? Everybody know how to do that conga. Do you like the rock? Okay. You know uh, where the rock comes from, right? It comes from Africa. It's a tribal, ancient dance and music form that relates to the conga, relates to all these dances. Okay? That was called Ball in the Jack in 19. In the by the 1920s, it was called race, and also it was called twist. Remember the twist? Yeah. You just, uh, remember how you dance the twist? Yes. And we used to shake like that. Okay. Now you know that in the Caribbean yeah. we have that twist. Okay. It can take us to all the islands. For example, let's go to Dominican Republic with that merengue. Boom, pa, boom, pa, ka, boom, pa. Tuku, 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 ka, tum, ting, tum, pa. Tuku. Or oh, let's go to Cuba with the salsa. Okay, or oh, with the rumba, pa 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 pa. I think it's a pa 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 Okay, a lot of twists here. And then now let's go down to Brazil with the twist. In the samba, say samba. Okay. Now, let's go as it happened to me when I went to Cuba in 1978 uh, from Jamaica. And this, uh, this beautiful uh, festival, Caribesa. And uh, we went in the ship, all the Caribbean together. Playing together, that's why we have this here today, okay? And dancing together. And I noticed that the Jamaican were dancing the reggae with a twist. Choco, 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 okay? Now, let me bring you to this table here, okay? This table, as you know, has all these instruments that are going to talk to us about history, about what we are, about identity. Thank you for bringing that up, okay? Now, this first one here. It's called Chequeré. Can we say Chequeré? Say it and do it. Chequeré. Okay, before and when we start about Bongo, we also have to talk about this instrument. Okay, a natural African instrument. Okay, this instrument has a, a board, it's a board. Marimbo, can you say marimbo? Marimbo. a skirt. Okay, a palma. And also this instrument, you can create this sound with that combination. But this instrument, has uh, a characteristic. It can speak to you. Okay? Check this out. What is your name? What do you say? Check it out. Check it because most of the names of this instrument come from the way they sound. What is your name? Huh? What do you say? Huh? Bomba. Bomba. What is your name? Bomba. What is your name? Conga. No, 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 check this out. Say something like this. Say tumbadora, say tumbadora. No, check this out. What is your name? Tumba, say tumba. What is your name? Tonga, say tonga. Now, if you want to play this instrument, you need to count numbers in Arabic. You know how to count in Arabic language? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, now, let's let everyone together. One, two, three, four. Okay, one, two, three, four. 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 One, Come on. 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 Come on.
Now you're speaking Taino language, okay? <laughs> maybe African language, or maybe Taino and African, okay? But I can imagine this uh, African fellow uh, with the Taino asking him, Hey, 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 uh, Taino, come over here, okay, Maro, you want Maraca? Yes, 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 you want Maraca? That's why we use the Maraca in the bomba. Boom, 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 pa, 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 boom, boom, right? Now here we have these more contemporary maracas. Okay, this one used mostly in the salsa. Here we have this one that is called. Hey, Wino! And you and that, you're talking about, you know, really uh, ancestry language. Okay, and I can imagine this interaction. Okay, but before I used to think that this Wino. The widow was mostly like a native or white Puerto Rican. We can't but if we are clarify something to me that Fernando is a musicologist published in one of his book uh, African e about Africanism, but you can find it in Amazon. Okay, okay? And in this, what we're gonna tell me in many minutes that we have in the house is that he found notes that he found the widow more related to the Africans than the natives. Okay? And he found the Guido more uh, from the 17th century on. Okay? And when you look at the Francisco J. Uh, Cuaro, the paint of Francisco J. El Velorio, what do you see? An African looking like boy with a wheel on the hand. And nobody talks about that. Why is that? Okay? And then when we find this wheel, we can use it in the plena. <laughs> And many other forms that have that answer, we like the dancer. But then the okay, and the hero music. But that map again, huh? come from the freedom mode of the Arabs. Okay, North Africa, as well as the water, you know, don't talk about that too much. Okay, now, here we have this other wheel that, as you know, is mostly used in the salsa. And in many other forms, like the song, etc. This, and this one is called which one? And what is the name of this one? Guira. Guira. Thank you. So we have the wheel, we have the guira. And uh, uh, you know as uh, the merengue from Dominican Republic who have a strong connection with Haiti. Yes. A strong influence from Haiti. Rumpa, 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 you know, because of a historical uh, something that happened there, that they needed some other people that were not domain from the Dominican Republic to Latin America, and they created. But that's the version. That's the version. It's more. This is more intense. It's more and more uh, complicated than that. Now we have other instruments. For example, let me show you this instrument. This instrument is called aguapu. Can you say aguapu? Okay, ancient language. Okay. Bye. So, it's very theoretical. Okay, this instrument is Asian. What reminds me about notes from uh, Lopez Valdez about people that were misled from China. Okay, in, uh, I think in the 19th century, like uh, something like uh, 150,000 people were brought from China, misled with false contracts, they were slain. Okay, they were together with the Taino uh, uh, natives. They went together with the Africans, in, in, uh, you can find information in the area of Puerto Rico in, in Calle. There were sugar cane plantations, okay, because always we, uh, we pulled them, uh, we placed them in the coast. And Calle is not the coast. 
And when we're talking about the Frances Ledroux, who, uh, who uh, you can find the first traces of the bomba, I believe in 17th century Morocco, people who were there dancing and playing bomba. That means that the Africans were everywhere in the island. So it's a misleading information that we have said that just the coast in the African presence. And the African presence, when we talk about north to south of Africa, is more, and the south of Europe, is more complex. Okay? Starting with the fact that Africa is the name that has two versions. A Roman version of the creation of the name, or a Greek, or a Greek, or a sub-Saharan version of the name. Okay? We're not thinking about Kassan films anymore, right? Now, we have this uh, beautiful thing here about these Chinese that were established, a group that uh, most of them were raised in Cuba, but some of them were taken to Puerto Rico, and I found when I was doing my doctoral studies that these fellow students, great students, her husband come from those Mandami, and they're studying in Guayama. There is a, a neighborhood there. She told me, and she assured me, that a lot of those uh, inhabitants there that are Puerto Rican, they come from those Mandami Chinese. And I have a friend, I have a picture that I can share with you about this uh, couple, okay, in which he looks like a Chinese and his wife looks like, like an African, an Afro Puerto Rican. And the, 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 the granddaughter uh, looks like a Mandami Chinese. And they, they say, Ojalá. And they say, uh, Bendito. Okay, also. But Ojala come from Ojala. Okay? That may uh, complicate the thing a little more. I'm sorry about that, okay? Now, okay, now, here we have other instruments like this one, this one. Uh, I, I'm just showing this instrument because you are the one, the one, okay? Just, you know, so be ready for this. Okay, this one, you just play it like this. Uh, this is it's called the United States Barrier Slab. But we always call the quija de burro. Can you say quija de burro? Quija de burro. Donkey show. Why was that? Because then, in Haciendo Punta, actually, I discovered this instrument that is a real quija de burro that we use in the Caribbean. Yeah. And that's why explained to me why we call this quija de burro. Okay, now, here we have this other instrument that you can use, like this one, Apuche, from Brazil. And we go, uh, actually, let's visit now the wooden instruments that are very important. Here we have this one that we call what? Palito, thank you. We call it palito, but also you can call them clave. Can you say clave? Now, if we go to Puerto Rico, I'm sorry, uh, I'm going to do it really soft, okay? And you play the side of the drum like uh, naturally and actually have been done in the bomba. Now, automatically, you change the name to Gua. Say Gua. Gua. Well, let's go back to the club. Okay, let me show you something. Yeah, share with you something. The club is not only the instrument, it's a pattern. Okay? It's a, part, it's a way of living. I start right down in the one and flies and go about in the three. That is a downbeat of and even numbers. That mathematic relation. That's why Bernardo Ortiz from Cuba, when uh, you can see that in his notes, he was hired by the by the Cuban government to prove in the I, I think in the forties before the revolution uh, that African descendants of Afro Cuba were savage people didn't be, be, uh, uh, and have the honor of the place in the mainstream. When he went down there with those Nanigo, he discovered that it was so mathematically and anthropologically complex that not even the white people could, could sit on their feet. Okay? And he got as, uh, to be, from that point on, one of the best musicologists that we have in the whole uh, 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 America continent, I mean the world. Okay, that we also ha always have to do, we play bomba plena, we always have to hit, use him as a reference, point of departure. So here we have this one. Actually, the other one. That would be one, two, three, one, two, go. One, two, three, one, two. Oh my God. There's a lot of playing. Okay, now. No, no, no. This is the signal of the director. The signal of the, you know, the band, you know, they don't work. Let's stop. Okay. <laughs> now, 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 
let's travel through the Caribbean with this uh, club. Okay, everybody here? With this, soft, soft. Let's go to the Dominican Republic. And now let's go to Puerto Rico with the plena. Say plena. Oh, you can sing and play at the same time. Okay. Okay. Let's stop here. Let's divide that pattern. <laughs> Cut it in half and just retain the first part. The one, two, three. Ah, ah, ah. So play that with me. One, ah, ah, one. Ah, one, two, three. One, two. Everybody there. Now, let's go to put the people with the cita. Bomba, say bomba cita. Bomba cita. One, two, three. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Now, Let's go to our sister baby with the same pattern. Uh, 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 okay. One, two, three. One, two, three. Two, 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 now let's go to Brazil with the samba. Say samba. Samba. Uh, we're going to One, two, three. Kutu, 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 kutu. Okay, so you create a music box here, okay? Not too hard, and not too hard with the, so put the finger here, and you play right on the center. What a beautiful sound there is, okay? Now in this pattern, you just uh, delay the third beat a little more, okay? Like a one or one or one eight of, 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 in the musical activity, okay? So, and then you add the drum. A low pitch and a high pitch. And that's what you need for those who, uh, of you who think you cannot learn this instrument, that's false. Okay, because this is what you just need to think about. Low and high, that combination. For example, in Brazil, they use it like this. 
but this is a little boring, right? Yeah. Really bad. Okay, but let's start combining the polyrhythmica. Say polyrhythmica, polyrhythmica. Okay, and oh, so we combine it like this. So when we combine that polyrhythm, now it's not boring anymore. Now here we have this instrument called, what do we call this? Sencerro, thank you. This is a very old name. Say Sencerro. Say Campana. Say Cowbell. That's a story for that. Okay, now. Cowbell uses the same principle. No and ha. So you combine that. Now here we have this other bell called agogo. Can you remember that? Agogo, say agogo. Remember uh, uh, in the 1960s we had these agogo dancers? Okay, we used to stick like this and we had a ride like that. Okay, agogo like that. Okay. So, <laughs> When you say, say, I don't want it, you speak an African language, one of the many languages, okay? And, and as you know, uh, in Brazil, they call it a go-go, and basically combines the low and, pitch, uh, and high pitch. But the model of this instrument is said, the water. Can you say, the water? From Africa. Double bell, bigger bell from Africa, okay? In Brazil, they combine it like this. Okay. And here we have this bell. This bell. I'm not gonna be like this. This is a bell. No, you know what happened? No, we were filming for glo a glo a global production from Brazil, uh, uh, a special program for Latino Punto Ocho Show in New York, actually in Puerto Rico. We were in New York, and this guy, the, the producer, the, the, he gave me this so that the gratitude. Uh, you know, invited him to me. And I laughed like the way the same way you did. Okay? <laughs> but he showed me a film about how they were using this film. Okay, this is great. So I wanna make an experiment here, do an experiment here. I would I would like to invite you, lady. <coughs> okay. Do you have this water? And while you get over here, okay, I can hear the comforts while you get over here. I know. <laughs> no. When you get over here, I want to just let you know that you're going to pick up this, okay? And I want you to play just the low and high. Low and high. And keep it like that. Okay? Let me see that. Let me see that. Wow. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, keep it like that. I'm not gonna look at you. I'm gonna put that all, all the way, okay? Don't no, look at me. Don't no, look at me, okay? Keep it there. Give it more. And we keep it part with these clavers and I mean these girls and you know um, as someone gets hungry and, and this lady over there say I want hungry you don't understand what the hell it is what we do we turn this upside down we have a little water. <laughs> and get a little water here and that's it thank you very much you may please Mara. Mara thank you you have to Mara now just to share briefly with you that most of the instruments that we took for granted were instruments, just instruments, they were working instruments in the past. That's important before we talk about bomba player. Now let's talk about this dispersion of our people throughout and let's find similarities. For example, here we have this instrument that are very similar in construction. Okay? This is a pandeiro, pandeiro, check that. Pandeiro, pandeiro. From Brazil. Okay? This is a tambourine from Brazil. Okay, and this is a pandero. And you say pandero, I know that you know that. Pandero. Or say pandereta. Pandereta. Don't call it penera, please. Because penera is the woman who sings the prayer. 
We already protested about that because some uh, uh, business people were calling them Penera to spell them. They're like, oh no, stop that. It's not Penera. Penera is the woman that sees the Penera. That actually in Ponce, there's a lot of cigarettes that are in the island of, of Penera heroes. Okay? The three products. Now, that's how we. You take it like this, you're going to take it like that, and you just scratch it here, a little costilla. Okay, so you change the tone. Okay, now, the pandeiro, you use his bare hand, okay? In Brazil, for example, a basic uh, pattern would be. Okay, for the pena, we first have one person with this one that we call it bajo, say bajo. bajo. Also, seguidor. Sometimes you find confusion about the name because uh, seguidor. Falls, continues, doesn't stop. Okay? And you can find that the person is playing something like this. Now, what part of our body sounds the same? The heart, the corazón, el cuchador, right? Now, here we have that the when then a second person will, play, will uh, come in uh, with the second one that not it's particular because of size, because of, of tuning, okay? It's a little tuned up, okay? It, we call it banal. You say banal? Banal. Sometimes some people call it punteador. Cool. So we have the bajo, pum pa, pum pa, pum pa. So we have that whole rhythm, that combination. Then we found that the third person will come with this one. Higher, that is called quinto. You say quinto? Quinto. Or requinto? Requinto. Those are two names that the Pedro called, okay? And then you have, right, Jose? Am I right? You can tell me that I'm wrong because you are the one that comes from there, okay? Okay, now we have the bajo and the banana. Pum pa, ping ping, 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 pum pa, Okay, with all the other elements that are added throughout the years, of like the wheel, like all that, like, as you know, okay? Now, I come here in front of this instrument, conga, tumbadoras, and timbas, and this is like a piano, like every instrument, okay? Okay, what is that? Let's do it. One, two, three, four, no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> Now, as part of my presentation, I'd like to share this, this beautiful story about how these drums were made in the Caribbean, okay? Imagine this guy called Bangua. Can you say Bangua? A real name of a real guy from Africa. He was there in his country in Africa, one of the coasts, okay? With the Bada people, say with the Susu people, uh, right from Senegal to all fishermen that were then from Senegal to, to Ghana, all these people, the Bada, and and he was still enjoying with his family. Okay, so he enjoyed that close rising. And, and imagine that sun, the, the sky, everything, his family, the animals. Uh, the, the, the kids, uh, you know, just by the sound of the sea, uh, enjoying playing. And suddenly, these two big hands, both him, snatch it from there, put him in a ship. And right on the ship, in the middle of the sea, of, of the sea his name was changed from Jack to, I mean, from Bagua to Jack. Okay? Now this new name, Jack, is pushed to go there in the ship with his new name to a sugar cane plantation in one of the Caribbean islands. Which I can imagine that he was that day working with his machete. And you know what a machete is, right? Very sharp, actually. Okay? And he was cutting his sugar cane. And one day his master came to him, hey Jack, uh, you know something, uh, this is a free day for you. 
You can do whatever you want. That's why we have so many celebrations and festivals and the hidden uh, uh, places, dancing the moment still in the 20th century, like the Pacific Guanabia. You know, so he, he found his people. Hey, people, you know something? The master told me that we can play today. We can have fun. We can, let's play my drum. A drum? Oh my God. No, 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 no. My drum is in Africa. Oh my God. No, 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 no. I'm not going to jump off the sea. Are you crazy? Okay, let, so he did something else. He started looking around. I'm sorry, let me, let me look around here. Then looking around. And, looking, and suddenly, he saw a big paddle like this one. Remember the ship from Europe that used to carry a lot of codfish and meat and things like that in this barrel? So he went to the barrel. He shot the barrel. But he was missing something. What? Skin. The child. What can I do? Okay, so suddenly he looked up there in the hill. He saw a goat. And he said to himself, I know that goat from Africa. Let me go up there and, and talk to her. So we went up the hill. Boom, beep, boom, beep, boom. Woo! Woo! Wow! And he asked the goat, Hey goat, may I borrow a piece of the skin to make a drum with my barrel down there? And the goat said, Me! <laughs> okay, goat, you know something? This is the only day that I can do this. So I need just to learn a piece of your skin. And the goat said, Me! Okay. Okay, uh, listen, my sister, I know you're from Africa. Why don't we deal with something? And suddenly the goat ran away, and the man chased the goat. He said, The goat, and this is the man. He pressed the goat. He took uh, his knife, a little knife. He took a little piece of the skin. I'm sorry, goat. Thank you, goat. And he brought it down the hill. Boom, 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 boom. And he put it on top on his, on his bottle. And finally he had his first drop in the career. Give her a hand to the drop, please. Now, we got to play. But before he started playing, he did something else. He listened first to his heart. So place your hand, please, and listen to your heart. No, on the other side, the other side, the other side. Okay. <laughs> So he took that idea and he put it on his drum like this. And he combined his hands in such a way that he made up something different. And there was a rhythm. And he was very happy with it. Before you start playing with me, you need to follow me carefully. Listen to me. Okay, I'm going to start over. Hold me, start over. And this guy said, what a, what a nice beat we have there. Let me, let me try to follow that. Okay, keep it up. Yes, let me cover it. He's trying to do something like this. Boom, ba, 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 boom, ba, 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 boom, ba, 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 I'm bringing here the first job in the Caribbean. <laughs> I'm sorry, Robert, I just want to play with you. But Robert said, well, no, don't worry about that. You know, what we need to do is follow Jack with something nice that he's doing. Jack, can you do that thing over again? And Jack said, what thing are you talking about? This is a serious play, but okay, this is going to be careful. Okay, so he said, over in case. And then this guy said, Robert said, okay, now, and now follow me hand with this. Okay, okay, keep it up, keep it up. Then this guy said, what a nice combination we have here, let me hear it. He sat down, he got the rhythm in his body, okay, and he started doing something like this. Keep it up! They started dancing. 
And then suddenly, a guy with such an attitude came also with them. To kakum kum 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 and then he said, can you please stop this music and people stop? And then he said, I don't know why we have three people playing all those drums, but I can play them by myself. And then people said, Ooh. and he said, uh, that I said, let me sing to you, right? Uh, what did I say? What did I just say? And I can play all those instruments, but they don't seem to be. Can you help me? Okay, okay. Okay, uh, please excuse me. Fast step from my foot on the piece of here. Oh, yeah. oh, uh, 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 I'm sorry, guy. Uh, uh, I would like to play your drum. Can I play your drum? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, just uh, don't, don't jump over there. Okay, just go around. Okay, just count it out. One, two, three, and sit down. Right, right there. Right. Jose, can he sit down right there? Yeah, sure. Okay, good. Go around. Be careful with that room, okay? Okay, please, okay. Okay, behave. Okay, to the round. Like this, okay. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, Robert! <laughs> How you doing, my friend? <laughs> oh, you're taller, okay. You're growing, okay. Uh, may I use your drum just to do something really, something nice, okay. Quickly, thank you very much. Okay, you're really tall, okay. So, just get around. Okay, jump and do whatever you want, okay. Be careful, don't fall, okay. Just uh, uh, go around. Uh, uh, you can sit behind those seats that are okay. Okay, go around and sit right there. Behave. Okay. Okay, sit to the drop. Sit to the right there. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jack. Jack. Jack! Please! Okay. We're going to close the place, so you need to get. See, I just need uh, just a brief moment, okay? Just go around, okay? Go around. Thank you. Be careful there, okay? Go around. Okay, just go around and sit down. Okay. Right there. Just, just, just about that. Hey, sit down right there. Just go around, okay, sit down by there, don't bother anyone, okay? Okay, there you go. Okay, so he took the other drum, he put it like this, okay. And now he said, okay, Jack, can you come and show me what were you playing on this drum right here? No, no, okay, no, no, let me try, let me try first. Something like this, right? And you, <laughs> uh, you were playing something like this. <laughs> and you <laughs> could play something like this, right? And then he said, okay people, just watch me. He got ready. Okay. He sat down. And then he said, okay, Jack, I'm going to start with you. Just correct me if I, if I do something wrong, okay? Okay, there we go. Okay. Okay. Okay, brother. Check me out. Okay. Go with you. Thank you, Carl. 
he just listened to his heart and he started combining like this.
I don't need to do this anymore. Stop or stop, please. No, 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 no. The drums are gonna tell us, telling us when to stop. Like we have in the in the bombas, you know, we have break to start and break to finish. Okay. When you do, for example, let me just stop here to show this. When you do the sika, for example, one of the breaks is all the drums will like that. I have to say one, two, three, four. Okay? Even though it's Arab and not Arab, we love them, but you know, we don't need to count like that. But when we were paid, that's what I'll be Okay, in the Yuba, it's the same. In the Yuba, when we have uh, pay, the way to start. So there is fun to that. The people start. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Everybody. We have to add a whole night, we have to do complicated things for that. Okay, for the other day. Okay, just that, and then we finish. Okay, so as simple as that. Now, thank you. Now, now, now. I would like, uh, I forgot to mention, I have some CDs there. Uh, we need to get to Boston, so we need to pay for the gas. <laughs> so, if you all please help us and take all the information, we're gonna have a penance in May. A penance that we're gonna have here, okay? So May 16th, come here, come to Boston. We brought some people like that. Roberto Cepeda is gonna come back to us. We brought uh, Nico from New York here, okay? And we hope to bring some other people and share with them. Now, here we go. I would like to uh, bring some of the people here to stage. Uh, let me say, Marisa, who who would like to come from you? Both of you, uh, come over you because you are generators, very generators. You know, you were here. Presentation of Helen Valerde. I'm gonna get you there, okay? Don't worry. Okay, okay. And I'm gonna give you this instrument here. That is the one. This one is I'm gonna play the one. Okay. So uh, come up here. You're gonna be in the center. You're gonna be in the center so everybody can follow you now because this is gonna be the one. You can stay there. I'm gonna move myself on because now you are the most important people. And this is what you need your city to do for now. You uh, pick it up like this, okay? And just play. One, two, three, four. You get that space so you know where the one, we don't need to count one anymore. Okay, for you, it's one, two, three, four, and one, two. And go near, uh, nearby there. Okay. Okay, now we have that. Uh, we have the one, two, okay, in the one, two, three, four. I will, uh, Nala, you could, uh, you could put the uh, math and all that. I know that you gave it a great history. <laughs> Let's try that. Come over here. Okay. All right, I'm going to give you this instrument. And check this out. While Dior is doing one, two, three, four. Let me move this over just quickly. Just uh, let me move this over quickly. The, uh, and just by him, you're gonna follow him. Okay. And probably you're gonna follow that one. But you're gonna do uh, uh, fractions, okay? As Fernando just said, the complication of this music is doing one, two, three, four, with the low, excited with the low pitch, you're gonna double that. One, two, three, four. Uh, follow me there, follow me there. Okay? Let's try that. Okay, you, you, okay. One, two, three, four. One, two. Okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I love it. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What are you? Now we like to have people from this side right here. Okay. And I would like who would like to volunteer? You. Okay. I'm sorry. Would you like to come? I'm not coming. I need mean, you. Two people, how many? Uh, let's say, let's say, yeah, we can have three. Another person, you guys come? Oh my god, give me a hand. Okay, that's great. Okay. Now, for now, I want you to play straight, uh, play now with the pandemic. You want to do, to do a pause that I need for this, and then later on, because still we, have, we, we, we can work it out for you, okay? Okay, okay, right here. Oh, no, no, no. Right here, right by there. Okay, so you move over, so you're in the center always. 
you come here on this side, and then you move over. I'm gonna move the table for you, so we don't want, we don't have the next here so today. So it's over, okay? You come over here, and you go on the other side. Okay. Right here, you just stand by here, by here. Because you're gonna be following them, right here, right here, right here. Come right here, come right here. You're gonna be between the one and what they, what you know what they're doing, okay? And this is what I want you to do. Take this instrument, okay? Right now, take this instrument, take this instrument, take this instrument, oh, I'm sorry. And then you're gonna remember to play one, two, three, one, right? But you just play one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, and besides the other two, one, two, three, one, two. And that's pretty hard. Yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, follow that. One, two, three, play the card. Give me more. Yeah. Ow. Ay, mamá. Ow. Okay. Very excellent. Now, I would like to invite some other people from this side, one, two, three, four, who from this would like to come, please. Okay, you have just one minute to the side. Okay, you. Huh? Yeah, yeah, come, come. Oh, you come. Oh, come on. Yeah, okay. yeah, yes, yes, thank you. Volunteer. Volunteer, huh? and I want another one. Two volunteers, another volunteer. You won't be alone, so come. Okay. But the lady, would you like to come? Yeah, yeah. Okay, come over here, and I would like to give you a a gentleman, would you like to come? Yeah, come on. Okay, I have another instrument for you. Okay, I have this one, this one, and I have, I have this one, okay? I have all this for you, but don't take it home, please, I'm okay. Okay, uh, okay now, stand right by here, so you place yourself between uh, Diora and Mr. Nadal, uh, Professor Nadal, and uh, Marisa and uh, uh, no. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, okay. And, and then take this instrument here, the wheel. Take this wheel here. Okay, the stick, and you take this. Wheel. And basically, what you're going to do, you're going to follow the order. When the order is playing, one, two, with this one here, one, three. You can do one, two, three, four. Oh, you can go.
Then they were sitting like, oh, look at this. Oh, this is so nice. OK, no. You know, calls and response that Mitchell professed about before is inherited from Africa. Remember, at that time, what they have in Europe was more the medieval kind of choral music, uh, mostly in the, in, the, in the way of unison. OK, you examine that music. But then the African bring us that particularity aspect of the sharing, chorus and response. So the chorus goes like this. Bandera. 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 Now following the one, okay, they're very important. You're gonna say, bandera, bandera, one, two, three, and wait. Bandera, okay, let's do it. One, two, with you. Four. One, two. Yeah. Wait, 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 go! Bandera, 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 band
that was incredible. That was a picture in my an image, clear in my mind that will never uh, will, will erase. Okay. About the Vienna, I got uh, fortunate to pay Cordo Loreta. I mean to meet Cordo Loreta. And Cordo Loreta from my barrio used to live in Calle 6. They have different streets. Okay? And he used to come to my house a lot because he was a very good friend of my father. My father used to uh, 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 write him to the Brazilian Malaguer to dance Bon Bandera. Then I discovered years afterwards. That was a secret that my father was one of the singers of the band there. Okay? So, so there is something in the family, even though he came from Cuomo, that is Hero music. Okay? But if you know Hero music, pa 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 uh, Regina, uh, happens to be that uh, 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 this friend of ours who is a great precaution at the Carrillo. Anthony Carrillo was in her house, in his house, and he told me that we found the connection. We are cousins. He was cousins to my mother. And he used to dance bomba with my grandmother. For Regina, my grandmother was a bomba dancer. Okay, so I had all that in the blood. And not by chance, I like this so much, okay? But I decided to go further, further down, especially when I met the Sagrada family, those together, they opened my mind a lot. And then going back to my aunt in, in, in uh, Visa Francesca, I don't know if you need to know Visa Francesca from San Antonio, who is going to ask about my group, the mother of, of, uh, of Don, Don Santiago, and, uh, and she is my aunt. So we have all that connection right there. Okay, to answer your question, Jose. Are you family of Agustin Arce? Uh, no. no. Uh, a lot of people ask, maybe. Maybe. Maybe, maybe but the Arce came from Toledo, Spain, and he was a slave. Okay. And he gave his last name to slaves. Okay, so when uh, I was in Tom University in Boston doing a presentation, and this girl, a nice person, who came six years to me. I'm from Spain, and I'm Arce. I would be made it. I said, well, in a way, let me tell you so. But what is this for me? I'll say it's not a very common name. It is a very common last name. But I'll say a great writer who I met also. Uh, 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 we met also the Puerto Rico, my God, as the Vasquez. He got the, the last name as. Okay? Uh, and even though she's not really his face, we're all like an African Puerto Rico, but she's an African Puerto Rico. Thank you. Thank you, Mara. Thank you for being here. Okay, thank you. Good job. Good okay, job. Okay. Uh, uh, basically, okay. the question? Oh, real quick, I know that the original difference is a bomba. What, what's the African connection and Ponce as to why they, they put the drum down? Okay, let, let, me, let, me, let me answer to you with another fact. I was talking to, and thanks for being that question, the connection with Africa. And in Africa, we get, as you know, Congo people in the south, in, in the south. Also, we have people from Mozambique. We have people from the south. But remember, in 19, in 1898, the Europeans created those boundaries as we know as Africa were created by the Europeans. They created the boundaries of Congo, Angola. If you look at behind that, there is a European power behind that. Okay, Guinea. Uh, is in the French in, in Guinea. Okay. And you know how again, just to, uh, before I answer your question, we got this name, Seiko Silva, a great friend who lived in, uh, in Amherst, Massachusetts. He was a member of the Thank You One. Love you, okay? Love you. He uh, uh, was a member of the National uh, uh, Dance Troupe from uh, Guinea. Okay, if you look at videos from, you're going to see him there. Okay? He told me recently that Guinea. They got the name because these French explorers, they came and found this woman watching the coast of the river, okay, doing a lot in the river. And they asked him about the other, what was the other side, okay? They told, they told them, Conakry, or Conakry, I mean, they were asking them in French, they didn't know French, Conakry means go to the other side. And they named that area, Conakry, they made the houses, and, and they, they asked them their name in French, Conakry, they don't know French. 
The term kine, kine means woman. And they place the name to kinea, to kine, to the whole country. Okay? In the same way it happened with the Taino, continues to happen in the history. What language do we speak? What are we studying about? Who is their perspective? Okay, let's go back. This is what Seiko Sira told me about the bomba. I will, I will use a uh, uh, in Puerto Rico, in 2009, uh, the primer festival de la herencia africana, the first uh, African heritage festival, maybe we can do it here with, with you. Okay? And I brought all this group from the island that were, you know, have something to do with the African heritage. Okay? It was a week of celebration. We dedicated that uh, to great people, among them Berta Cepeda, uh, and it was great. And then we, I brought this group, Babinele, that's a drummer, who say to see that is a director, and Babinele, his wife, are uh, director of this group. They brought people from uh, Mali, they brought people, great musicians. Okay, it was great to, to add to that. And one day we were invited by the, by the that week, by the government of Guam, the, the, the mayor of Guam, invited us to go there to the week. We went to a special celebration, we were sharing with the students, and these students were very good. They came with their barriers and they asked Seiko about this. Okay? We told them, this is Chan Kaji. Chan Kaji is the name. Okay? And it's the Susu from Guinea, precisely, they play that. Okay? And then they, he plays all the same. I was curious about it, and when one of the pieces I went to his house, we used to go uh, every time, every often throughout the year. I went, you know, uh, I took the drums and I go, talk to me about that, let's write this down. I don't even know where the place I know, but recently, you know, since I needed to come here, okay, I asked him about the poem. Okay, listen to the rhythm, tell me the name, and tell me the word. And he's been in all these stories. Especially when we are in a place that we don't belong to, okay? A lot of problems can be psychological problems too. Okay, just one to I'm sorry that I went too far. Every yeah. few more minutes, and there are refreshments, by the way. Okay, after we finish the, the session. Have you found any connection between the sacred batas of Ifa and Bombi Plena? Uh, I know that there is, uh, I used to practice the vueltas. And there is a vuelta that I don't remember very well the name, that it sounds a lot like a plena. Uh, the, 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 the basic, the 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 yeah, okay, and the combination with the with the the okonkolo and the and the and the omele and the other the, the, the drum, they told it. It sounds like a player, okay. So well, it's a section that we used to practice. But I I I saw practicing that for many, uh, for except for the jacket of the food, I still practice it. Uh, the one that goes, uh, if you play with one, with one drum, remember the, the same thing, the, the, the bata is high pitch, one side, low pitch, okay? And the other one, and the other one, and the other and you, uh, some people, you might have some people come by like this. Uh, You combine three drums, three, uh, one person plays with three drums. <laughs> okay. Okay, more or less to give you that. But instead of the connection, the one that I found that was more with the plena was that vuelta. Okay. And I call it when well, there's, there's different pattern depending on the deity. Okay. That they're celebrating or, you know, playing for. Okay. Okay, I want to ask you a question because it's something that I would like to research. I know that in uh, Afro-Cuban drumming, particularly in the religion, etc., the drums are consecrated. In other words, they have ceremonies yeah. with the, uh, for the drummers, etc., especially for the Babalaos. Uh, that's, that's in one part, that's in, in Nigeria, Nigeria. Right. Nigeria is not in all Africa the same. That's a, okay. every, remember, we have to consider that every ethnia or every cultural group, as I call them, have their different practices. Right. What happened when I met with Argelia Leon, Dr. Argelia Leon, in 70, 
A, we were invited by the uh, tour of our uh, ministry yeah. to uh, uh, a tour with us in the book. Yeah. We had this special occasion with Dr. Emilio Leon. I can see why yeah. they made this book about music of the, from Cuba. And I found out that uh, the Plena, I mean, the, the, the Neros Cañeros from Puerto Rico who mm -hmm. uh, immigrated to Dominican Republic and then to Cuba, they uh, in, in, uh, influenced in the structure of the song Cuba. Mm -hmm. which is great about this connection. So, one thing that he tells us is that no uh, practical practice of music in Cuba is pure. Mm -hmm. Because of this group that were brought from this very part of Africa, mm -hmm. we have this mixture. Actually, if you look at uh, Thompson, remember this uh, anthropologist? Yes, yeah. There's a beautiful... Uh, uh, Thomas Thompson, Thomas Thompson Ferris, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that he did, uh, you can see the film in Nigeria, Bay. Okay, they're playing the batal not with the hands, with a little kind of, uh, a calpa, you call it, like a, a paleta, they call it. Okay, that's how they play the batal, mm. in this part of the video. Right. Okay, the only place I have seen that is in Matanza, if you mm. play like that. Okay, so that gives you another perspective. So I cannot take one practice and, you know, because then we fall in the trap mm -hmm. of what the trap that happened with the European conquerors, you know, placing the name to everything and not really respecting diversity, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening now, okay? Right now, they consider us the same. They don't know that we, uh, Latino people are different. From Dominican Republic to Puerto Rico, we have diversity of Cuba. We speak the Spanish, uh, different versions of the Spanish. We have different, even by, in our own island, we have this difference. So just to, you know, just to speak to me, just to... No, 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 that uh, clarifies an awful lot. Uh, we have about another couple of minutes, uh, maybe one or two more questions, because we have to get out of the place soon. I, I remember, I have some refreshments. I, I know the story, I'm an, I'm an actor, okay, so please. <laughs> it fits me for... <laughs> I'm good. Okay, okay. okay, another question, please. Another question? Okay, well, yeah. Is there any funding by the government of Puerto Rico going into the spreading of the... Can you repeat that? I didn't hear the first part. Is there any funding by the government of Puerto Rico? Is there any funding? Funding, funding, money. Yeah, money going yeah. to the spread and... The spread of bomb by the plena in Puerto Rico. Well, let me tell you, when I went to the... To, to direct the music program, the history of the culture, I got there, I did my research before getting the, into my post. I found out that all those efforts are individual efforts. Okay? Then I have to call them. We need money, we need to do this, we need to do that's what you need. Petra Cepeda had to come to Miami crying because she's like my sister, because nobody was taking care of her. A very important woman at that point, 2001, I mean. To the 21st century. And I think it's still a problem. As to anyone, it's still a problem. What Tito Mato is still doing is on his own, from his pocket, with the Plenazo. And everybody in the Plenazo is on their own in the park. The Bombazo is safe. But Sudetela is the most wiser because he goes right to the major of, 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 and he uh, told me, oh, man, we need this, this is important, and he get the money. But, you know, not in this, without also recording and everything is from his own power. So this is not your part. I do this for my part. Okay? I think the only thing that, uh, that I read about, about the question of funding by the government for the arts, particularly for folkloric yeah. and, and the African part, is that they developed for the tourists, and this is a tourist bureau, what they call the Little Light, festival where they actually have a series of dancers who do a little bit, actually it's very superficial. Yeah. And they include Bon Barbera, <laughs> yeah. as an actor for that. But they do stress more on the hero, you know, the uh, decimas and you know the uh, yeah. states and the aguinaldo. But, uh, but that's basically for tourists. It's not yeah. something that they get deeply yeah. into, let's say. That's why I was asking so much because funding where is that? Okay, uh, okay but, uh, but listen, uh, for example, I right there in the, in the the table, you can take a slip and make a donation to Humano. This is a project that really supports uh Bomba Sankova, supports many people, or the school that doesn't have any money. 
that could have I've been putting in that for my brother, but you know that's a in the past before I returned to the United States three years ago. Uh, that was what was doing in the 90s. Getting that money, you don't have the money? Okay, just get something and I match it with you. Okay? So I ask you please to take a slip and get a donor, someone that you know that can give money to our brother that can help us. I'm talking to the Penasson and enjoy, okay? Enjoy. And with those words, let's give a big hand to our performer, the historian. Thank you. He has to be a performer, but he has to. Thank you. Do you have refreshments?